Hello students, welcome to lecture 17 of the online course on nanophotonics, plasmonics and material. Today we will be covering surface plus one polaritons or in short SPP and we will look into their fundamentals. So, here is the lecture outline. So, we will discuss about surface plus one polaritons, obtain the wave equation, we will look into SPPs at single interface the dispersion relationship of these uh, SPPs and we will also if time permits we will look into this uh, generation or else we will take it into the next lecture. Okay. So, surface plus one polariton. So, what is that? So, visible light as we know cannot propagate through highly conductive media such as metals. When a light beam crosses the boundary into such medium its intensity rapidly diminishes within a very short distance which is called as the penetration depth okay, and that is substantially smaller than a wavelength. So, a metallic surface rather acts as a mirror right, from which light is fully reflected back into the medium or dielectric medium where the light came from. So, in the previous lectures the metallic components have played the role of simple mirrors right if you remember the uh, reflecting surfaces we were discussing so you can think of metallic components there and the purpose there was to simply act as uh, mirrors now if i say the metal also supports some kind of light wave okay so don't be surprised with that so typically what happens you know when you see incident wave there is a reflected wave but there are conditions in which you are also uh, able to excite some kind of surface waves on this metal surface. Okay? So, they actually travel along the boundaries of the metal okay? and uh, typically they are confined to sub wavelength dimensions. So, such light waves they travel along a metal surface in the form of a guided surface wave. So, it may propagate on, but not in okay, the metallic wires. So, that you have to understand it does not penetrate too much into the metal, rather it is mostly guided along the surface of the metal. Okay. So, they are basically useful in integrated photonic circuits as waveguides. Okay. So, you can actually transfer information across these metallic surfaces over a very very short distance. Such structures can also serve as resonators within which light may be confined or from which light can scatter strongly at a specific resonant wavelength or frequency. So, there are a couple of applications with uh, SPPs which we have covered briefly during our introduction lecture. So, here we will go into the fundamentals of this SPPs. We will also look into some applications in the next lecture, but today's lecture will be mainly on the fundamentals. So, surface plus one polaritons or SPPs. Okay? So, these are basically what electromagnetic waves where they travel, they travel along metal dielectric or metal air interface fine and uh, where they are seen, which range they are seen, they are practically seen in the infrared and visible frequency range and they are called surface plasmon polaritons or SPPs. So, this is the illustration of surface plasmon. Okay? So, this is the thin planar metallic film and this is the boundary of the metallic film on the top you have dielectric. So, what is happening here you can see that you know the field or surface wave is allowed to propagate along the surface or the interface between this metal and dielectric. So, you can say more specifically that surface plus one polaritons are electromagnetic excitations propagating at the interface between a dielectric and a conductor and they actually decay along the perpendicular direction. So, you can understand because they decay very sharply along the metal. So, you can only see only one such representation is shown 
okay so electric field lines from plus to minus okay and here also from plus to minus plus to minus it is denoted by an electric field line but along dielectric you can see that the electric field is much more um, extended into the dielectric region okay in the perpendicular direction so this is the way they are propagating and the field is extended more towards the dielectric region now this electromagnetic surface waves arise by the coupling of the electromagnetic fields okay two oscillations of the conductors electron plasma so this is where you are basically you can actually use light to excite this kind of uh, surface waves so they are kind of an uh, interaction between the electromagnetic fields okay to the oscillation of the conductors in this case it's metals electron plasma right so this is again similar kind of uh, diagram but only one thing is shown here extra that is the direction of SPB propagation and this is what I was talking about that in the metal they extend less while towards the dielectric they can extend much more in the transverse direction. So in order to investigate the physical properties of surface plasmon polaritons we have to apply Maxwell's equation to the flat interface between a conductor and a dielectric. So these are again electromagnetic waves so they are bound to follow the Maxwell's equation. So if you remember the Maxwell's curl equations these are the two curl equations right. So curl of E is minus dou B dot T curl of H equals J external that is the external surface current density plus dou D by dou T okay. Now if you consider the case where there is no external charge and current density so you can actually get rid of this term and this term okay so no uh, current charge so you can get rid of this one first okay so you can actually combine these two and write curl of curl of e equals minus mu naught dou square d by dot t square okay that's very simple you can take the curl you take the um, curl equation here okay so what you get you get curl of curl of e okay equals minus dot dot t of curl of b okay b equals mu h so you can actually uh, take out um, mu okay and you can write like this okay so you are left with curl of h and curl of you curl of h you put from that formula by putting j external to be zero okay very simple now the curl of curl of e can be written as you know gradient of divergence of E minus Laplacian of E okay and this particular term okay we can expand further but first let us see what happens to divergence of D. D is nothing but epsilon E okay so you can write this as E dot gradient of epsilon plus epsilon divergence of E okay and if you remember that if there is no external uh, stimulus something like you know free charges so del dot d is also zero okay so that you can put here and you can uh, simplify the equation further so in that case this term so this is d so this del dot d becomes zero okay so what you require here you see uh, from this so curl of curl of E can be written as gradient divergence of E minus del square E. So del square E remains like this. Divergence of E can be obtained from this formula. Okay. So from this equation. So this is there. This part is 0. So you can write this as minus 1 by this epsilon will be going to the denominator. So 1 by epsilon and then you are left with this so in case there is a gradient of permittivity okay so it's not an isotropic medium in that case it looks like this and the right side remains like this okay it's pretty simple so d is simply replaced by epsilon e in this case okay so you also have a epsilon not coming into the picture because this epsilon is basically the epsilon r okay so for negligible uh, variation of the 
dialectic profile that is if you consider that epsilon is epsilon r okay over distances of of the order of one optical wavelength that means you are not having much variation in the dielectric permittivity in that case you can safely take this term also to be zero so you are just left with this term and this term okay you remove the negative sign from both sides what you are left with del square e minus epsilon by c square so that is basically mu 1 over c square is nothing but mu not epsilon not okay so this is a simplified version of the wave equation okay so practically this wave equation has to be solved separately in regions of uh, dielectric constant epsilon okay if there are variations in different uh, region okay and the obtained solutions have to be matched using appropriate boundary condition now here that is a requirement because the epsilon is not same throughout right because we are considering about the propagation along an interface so in one side of the interface the permittivity is different to the other side of the interface right so we have to solve them separately in the two regions and then you have to ensure that you know they are matched using proper boundary conditions so that is the requirement so this particular equation needs to be casted in a form suitable for the description of the confined propagating waves so let's have a look how we can do this so we have seen the wave equation now let us try to solve this okay so we can assume a time harmonic electric field which is ERT you can describe this as ER exponential minus I omega T okay and if you put that into that particular wave equation it looks like del square E plus k naught square epsilon e equals 0 so what is k naught that is omega by c okay so k naught is the wave vector of the propagating wave in vacuum so this equation we have seen before this is nothing but the helmholtz equation right so now we have to see the geometry so the propagation geometry needs to be defined next so let's assume a simplicity of a one dimensional problem okay so this is basically a one dimensional problem that along z something is changing but you have uh, along x and y there is no variation in the permittivity right so you can think of a uh, planar waveguide kind of a geometry and the waves here propagate along uh, x direction in the cartesian coordinate system right so specifically if you consider this x uh, propagation direction okay there is no variation along y so permittivity is only function of z so applied to the elect electromagnetic uh, surface problems the plane that is z equals 0 that is basically the x y plane okay that coincides uh, coincides with the interface sustaining the propagating wave because the propagating wave uh, is actually in that particular surface okay so there you can describe the electric field as e x y z can be taken as e z okay exponential i beta x so th this clearly tells you that your wave is propagating along the x direction and the electric field is basically extended here in the z direction okay so the complex parameter which is beta okay that is nothing but kx so if you think of a wave vector your uh, x component of the wave vector is basically the propagation constant for this traveling waves and the cross that corresponds to the component of the wave vector as i mentioned okay so if you take that and put this into the previous equation uh, you will get this is the form of the wave equation so now you are very specific that del square e where is it if you go back yeah this is the equation so del square e is now because e is now only in the z direction okay and uh, propagation vector or propagation constant you can say is only along the x direction okay so field along z and this guy is only all along uh, beta is along x direction so this is how you can write it okay so this becomes the wave equation for this particular case so you have 
d square e z d z square plus k naught square epsilon minus beta square. So, this is the uh, propagation constant of the wave that is traveling in this interface okay, times e equals 0. Now, naturally such a um, equation also will exist for magnetic fields. So, you can have uh, for magnetic fields okay, just the directions would be different. So, you can take this equation as the starting point for the general analysis of the guided electromagnetic waves in any waveguide. Now, in order to use the wave equation for determining the spatial field profile and uh, other dispersion of the propagating waves, explicit expressions need to be written for E and H. Okay? That is very important. So, this can be done in a very straightforward way. So, if you remember the curl equations that you have seen uh, previously. Now, if you introduce the harmonic time dependence that is dot dot t as minus i omega, you can get this uh, set of coupled equations. Okay? So, these are the equations that uh, correlate your electric and magnetic field components. Okay? So, h y is basically connected to e z and e y, h y is uh, connected to E x and E z, H z is connected to E y and E x. Okay? So, this is not a rocket science, you can go and sit down and uh, write down the uh, vector equations and then put those components, you will see you will get this after you apply those conditions. Okay? Similarly, you can also get the other set of equations that correlate electric fields to magnetic fields. Okay? So, these are interrelated equations. Now, we assume that the propagation happens along x direction. So, in that case, dot dot x can be written as i beta. Okay? And we have considered that the y direction is homogeneous. So, there is no variation along y. So, dot dot y equals 0. So, if you put these conditions here, things get even further simplified. Okay? So, the first equation that you have seen, okay, this one. So, okay, this term becomes 0. This can be written as this particular form. Okay? So, you can simplify these equations and directly um, correlate h x to one electric field component and so on. So, these all these equations, the six equations again get you know further simplified because of this condition. Now, it can be easily shown that the system allows two sets of self consistent solution with different polarization properties of the uh, pro propagating wave. So, there are basically two solutions which are possible. So, the first set are nothing but the transverse magnetic T m or you can also call P modes. Okay? And in this case, you are only bothered about E x, E z and H y. Okay? So, these are the components which are non-zero and in the second set, you are basically talking about transverse electric or um, S modes. So, in this case, it is like Hx, Hz and Ey which are non-zero. Okay? So, if you actually consider only the Tm modes, you can see that um, the system of governing equations. So, 14 to 19. So, we can think of from here to here, these are the six equations, interconnected equations. If you put these conditions that only E x, E z and H y are non-zero, then these six equations actually boil down to this one. Okay? That is very simple. And from this, you can also find out what is the equation of wave. So, this is what was not shown previously. So, this is in terms of magnetic field. Okay? So, electric field was written in terms of uh, E z and um, magnetic field is written in terms of H y. Okay? So, this is how the wave equation for the T m modes look like. Dot square H y dot z square plus k naught square epsilon minus beta square times H y equals 0. Okay? Now, if you think of the T modes, they are having analogous set. So, again remember in T, these are the components which are non-zero. Okay? Hx, Hz and 
e y are non zero so take those six equations and put only this three things as non zero you will be left with these two equations and that will also give you the t mode wave equation to be this one so this is what we have seen earlier right now with these equations you are able to uh, investigate the surface plus one polariton modes mathematically because these are the two modes which are possible along this interface fine that can give you a uh, solution now let us take spps at a single interface so the most simple geometry that can support surface plus one polariton mode is nothing but a flat interface between a dielectric which is non absorbing okay on one half that is we can take we can uh, split the uh, space with a boundary at z equals 0 so z greater than 0 you can take that half space to be dielectric non conducting or oh, sorry non absorbing as well and the bottom half you can think of you know um, z that is z less than 0 is nothing but a conducting half space fine so this one you can take a real dielectric constant that is epsilon 2 whereas metal usually have a complex um, dielectric constant and that has got also dispersion so metal does not have a flat uh, dielectric profile so you can actually take it as a, a function of omega so you can take this as epsilon 1 omega okay now the propagating wave solutions they confined to this particular interface okay that is we have assumed that the evanescent fields are basically decay along the z direction in both case so if that is the case let us first investigate these two halves separately first let us look into z equals 0 that is into the dielectric region so these are the equations we have understood that for um, this particular case h y e x and uh, e z are non zero and we can write the equations to be like this ok so that is for z equals 0 so if you consider z equals z is less than 0 in that case all these z's will be actually replaced by minus z so here if you put z equals minus z okay so you get the equation in this particular form okay so i would um, recommend you guys to write down the equations on a piece of paper to look at them at the same time so that will possibly help you to understand this better okay so these are basically which which are these equations okay what are these values so if you go back you have your answer here okay so hx hz and ey okay so that is for te modes and if you look into the tm modes yeah look at the tm modes ex ez and hy so these are the three um, components that you require and these are the three components that has been described here so we are basically discussing about the tm modes in this case okay so with that what we figured out that ki can be written as kzi so i is nothing but one and two that is that this two particular region so this is one this is two okay and uh, you can also find out that it has got a reciprocal vector that can be described as z cap which is 1 over modulus of kz okay so what is again what is kz that is the component of the wave vector perpendicular to this interface between the two media and you can also think of a um, reciprocal to that particular vector and that defines the evanescent decay length to the field which is perpendicular to the interface and this also quantifies the amount of confinement along the each side okay so if you actually discuss about the continuity of magnetic field and electric field at the interface okay you will see that this two amplitudes a1 and a2 they should be same so what are these two amplitudes so these are the amplitudes described here 
okay and they should be same okay i'm not going into the exact details of each of this so that poses the requirement that k2 over k1 should be equal to minus epsilon 2 over epsilon 1 that means the two permittivities should have opposing values okay so with that convention you can write that the confinement to the surface what you have seen here that demands that the real part of permittivity of epsilon 1 should be negative if you want the other one to be positive okay so that is possible when you choose one as metal and another as dielectric okay so that is what we understood that a metal dielectric interface will actually be able to support surface plus one waves so in that case the expression for hy gets further simplified and that has to further fulfill the wave equation and that gives you these two values of kz okay so k1 square that is the component of the wave vector along this interface this one in the metal and this will be k2 that is the component of the wave vector along that direction into the dielectric so you can actually obtain these two values now if you combine these two uh, these equations this ratio and these values from here you are able to obtain the dispersion relation of the surface plus bond polaritons which are propagating along the interface so you can obtain what is beta that can be written as k naught square root of epsilon 1 epsilon 2 over epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 so that is a very very important uh, relationship that defines the um, relation between the propagation constant and the frequency okay now you must be wondering where is the frequency term here where is the propagation constant term here so beta if you remember this is basically the propagation constant along the x direction right so this is basically where the k part is coming from okay and then epsilon 1 as i mentioned epsilon 1 is implicitly epsilon 1 uh, function of omega so this is where you know this creeps in so you actually get omega k relationship that is this uh, dispersion relation for spps propagating along this particular interface which is in x direction now this uh, expression is valid for both real and complex omega 1 that is for conductors with or without attenuation so you may think of a metal which is lossless in that case also it will work okay but that the requirement is that you, you need to have um, this one satisfied okay k, k2 over k1 should be equal to minus epsilon 2 over epsilon 1 this has to be satisfied okay now before we go into discussing the uh, re dispersion relation and what exactly it conveys let us also have a look into the possibility of uh, t surface modes okay so this was what we have seen is for the tm surface modes now similar kind of approach so we will start with the t set of equations that is basically equation number 23 to 20 uh, 37 35 okay so in each case we have to see that what happens for the te modes so we will be only discussing with those components which are non zero for te case and that is basically ey hx and hz right and we write this for z equals 0 also we write it for z sorry z greater than 0 that is in the dielectric we also write the same sort of equations for the space z less than 0 okay that is what happens in the metal okay so direct correlation because here this figure this one and this one are uh, on the same page so i'll be able to compare it so quickly you see how they are different so hz function of z equals a2 so a2 is the amplitude in the dielectric in metal you have the amplitude of a1 okay so this is a parameter that is different then you have beta omega mu naught that remains same 
propagation constant is also along this one so that remains same e to the power minus beta x e to the power minus beta x that is fine what is different the decay the decay constant in dielectric is e to the power minus k 2 z that is fine ok now in this case that is greater than 0 when z is already negative you can replace this minus z by z because that itself is negative so you simply have z and the constant decay constant in metal is k1 ok in dielectric it was k2 so this is how you can actually see the equations are being different ok that is all so all these equations here are a1 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 for dielectric you will have a2 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 ok very simple similar to the previous case now if you look into the continuity of e y and h x ok across the interface so these are the two components you have to see they are continuous then this is the condition that comes out to be so you will get a1 times k1 plus k2 equals 0 so if you take that particular condition we have to see what can give us that particular uh, this particular condition ok what what actually gives us that so since the confinement to the surface now you have to make sure that there is confinement on the surface so you will require that the real part of this k1 is positive and also real part of k2 is also positive then only they will be confined along the surface ok so this condition can only be fulfilled if a1 is 0 and if a1 is 0 a2 also becomes 0 that means there will be no amplitude possible when you are considering the te polarization it means no surface modes can exist for te polarization so in simple word we can say that spps are only tm polarized waves clear okay so once we understood that SPPs are purely TM polarized waves and we have also seen a glance of their dispersion relation. Let us look into the dispersion relation and see what it actually conveys. Now here is a plot ok dispersion relation of the SPPs. Hmm? So at the interface between a drood metal with negligible collision frequency. So you can think of as almost lossless ok but it is having a negative permittivity but it is lossless it is a real one ok so drood metal permittivity you have seen previously in the previous lectures if you take gamma that is a collision frequency to be 0 your uh, drood metal permittivity will be simply epsilon 1 function of omega will be nothing but 1 minus omega p square by omega square as simple as that ok so if you take that and you consider the two cases in one case it is this drood metal and air interface in other case it is this drood metal and silica interface so the air interface you are drawing it using gray curve so this light color lines are basically for that case and if you see the black curves they are basically for the metal silica interface now this we have seen this is the dispersion relation ok so now what are the parameter values for epsilon 2 if it is air epsilon 2 is 1 and fused silica if you think of fused silica epsilon 2 is nothing but 2.25 fine now in this particular plot you see one thing that the frequency is basically mentioned as a normalized frequency and normalized to what normalized to the plasma frequency of the metal so this kind of graph you can use for any uh, metal if you actually know the plasma frequency you can actually find out what is the frequency actual frequency we are talking about so this is a normalized one again the wave vector is also a normalized one you can see it is basically beta c over omega p okay now here what is happening that the solid curves that you see they are basically the continuous curves they are 
the real part of the wave vector beta and if you take the dotted part or the dashed part or the broken curves they basically correspond to the imaginary part of the beta. Now due to the bound nature the SPP excitation correspond to the part of the dispersion curve that lie to the right of the respective uh, light lines. So, these are basically the light lines. So, here light lines means here the dispersion relation is simply omega equals c k ok and this one what is the dispersion relation for this one omega equals c by n times k ok. So, these are called the light lines ok. So, you will see that in both case the SPP relation are basically lying towards the right of this ok. Now, if you look into the case that they do not exactly match. So, for air you see there is no case where there is a direct um, matching of momentum. So, you can take this as a momentum vector or k vector. So, for a given energy you will see that there is no uh, match between the momentum of the SPPs generated in the air interface with the photons that are in the air. Okay. So, you have to do some kind of phase matching or momentum matching using some techniques that we will describe uh, maybe in the next lecture okay. and we will see how we are able to um, excite uh, surface plasmons on air interface or silica interface. So, for silica this black line you have to look into this particular line as your uh, light line. For SP in air interface this curve you have to look for this particular gray line ok fine. Now, there are certain regime in this particular graph which also needs uh, special attention. First of all radiation into the metal occurs in the transparency region. So, what is the transparency region when the frequency is more than the plasma frequency that is when omega over omega p is greater than 1. So, this particular is region. So, if you draw a imaginary line horizontal line at this omega by omega p equals 1. So, anything above this is basically the transparency region ok. So, in that case the radiation into the metal will occur in the transparency region. Now, between this region and the bound mode. So, these are basically two bound modes the SPP modes ok. So, there is basically a region like this you see here no solid lines are possible and what is only possible here is nothing but purely imaginary beta. So, imaginary beta does not allow you propagation right. So, there is basically a frequency gap region that this particular region you are not able to excite any mode. Now, if you look into the region of small wave vectors here. So, when the wave vector is small ok that is you can consider about uh, mid infrared or lower frequencies ok. You can see that the SPP propagation constant is very close to k naught. So, k naught will be the propagation constant in the light lines. So, you see here they are very close the curve and the straight lines they are almost overlapping ok and the waves they extend over many wavelengths into the dielectric space ok. But in the regime ok in, in and in this particular regime SPPs therefore acquire the nature of grazing incidence light field ok. So, here it is more or less you know at very um, small value of uh, wave vector SPPs have very similar um, k naught as the light lines. And if you look into the opposite regime here where the wave vector is very large in that case ok the frequencies uh, of the surface plasmon they actually reaches a saturation kind of thing and that is basically the frequency of surface plasmon resonance ok. So, that is a characteristic surface plasmon frequency at a particular interface and your SPPs will actually 
try to go and reach that particular frequency okay now what is the good thing about this is that for a given frequency you are able to get spps with very large wave vector okay or wave number so that actually allows you to have very short wavelength and this is where the amazing thing about spps are for similar frequency you are able to have wavelengths which are very very tiny so you can actually confine electromagnetic radiation into those small region or you can manipulate electromagnetic radiation in that very small scale that is not possible by you know photons so that is why so these are light lines okay so here omega equals ck that's it so there is a relationship between the frequency omega and the lambda okay it's a linear relationship but when you come here they are having a non linear relationship and that allows you to basically do this wonder that for a given frequency you are able to bring your wave vector as large as possible or you can say wave number as large as possible that allows you to have wavelength very very small or as small as possible it cannot be infinitely small because there is a saturation here which corresponds to the surface plus bond frequency and this is the wonderful thing about spps okay so you can actually see that what is the characteristic frequency omega sp it is the plasma frequency divided by square root of 1 plus epsilon d or epsilon 2 in this case epsilon d is the dielectric permittivity here epsilon 2 is that uh, permittivity right so these are the cases let us quickly look into this so surface plus bond polariton wave at metal dielectric boundary this is what we have seen that this actually propagates along the boundary high low high low high low and so on but the field extends more into the dielectric region less into the metal this is how it is propagating nicely now if you look into figure 2 figure 2 actually plots the good things about okay so here there is a reversal in the denomination so the parameter for dielectric is epsilon 1 here so let us consider epsilon 1 okay so it's a positive value so you have drawn it here epsilon 2 is negative because that is the metal so let us plot this one so if you remember the drude uh, model so epsilon 2 in this case will be 1 minus omega p square over omega p omega square so at omega equals omega p the value is 0 okay and at omega equals omega s you will see that this value is same as minus epsilon 1 and this is the resonance okay so the frequency dependence of the permittivities of the dielectric and the metallic media are shown in this case and the condition that modulus of epsilon 2 should be greater than epsilon 1 that is required and that is satisfied for omega less than omega s so if you have frequency below this okay this is the case this is the region where your spps will exist and figure 3 is basically the dispersion relation we have just seen so this one as i told you this allows uh, transparency so this is basically the bulk surface plus bond or you can say bulk plus bond polariton bpps okay and these are the these two dotted ones are the light line why the slope is different omega equals c by n times k or beta okay so that is why the slope for silica is different than air the air one will have the highest slope and this is how it actually gets saturated towards omega s that is this particular uh, characteristic plus bond frequency so in this case omega s is omega p over square root of 1 plus of epsilon or sorry epsilon 1 here because um, permittivity is 2.25 so you can do this calculation it is 0 0.55 times omega p so you can mark this point so this is the final uh, value towards which this this curve will approach okay i believe this particular concept is clear
so with that we'll stop here today and in the next lecture we'll look into the mechanism of exciting surface plus one polaritons and some of their applications so thank you if you have got any queries you can drop an email to me at this particular email address mentioning mooc on the subject line